Today's lesson deals with why we have day and night on earth and why we have seasons on the earth. What causes day and night on the earth? Well, this is very simple. Day and the night on the earth is caused because the earth is rotating on its axis counterclockwise and the part of the earth that is facing the sun has daytime and the part of the earth that is pointed away from the sun has nighttime. Now, you may notice that we have different amounts of daylight at different times of the year. This is because the earth is tilted on its axis at 23 and a half degrees. And as the earth moves around the sun, the tilt of the earth towards the sun is different at different times of the year. So in the summertime, we are tilted, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, and so we get longer days and shorter nights. In the wintertime, when the tilt of the earth, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, then we get less daylight and more darkness. So our day and night is caused by the rotation of the earth on its axis, and the different amounts of day and night is caused by the tilt of the earth and where the earth is in its orbit around the sun. Why do we have seasons on the earth? Well, very simple. As I said, the earth is tilted at a 23 and a half degrees, and that tilt of the earth in its orbit around the sun, or revolution around the sun, is what causes seasons. The reason for this is that, let's just take a look at this diagram here. On two days of the year, March the 21st, the sun is directly over the equator. And the same is true for September the 21st. These two days are called equinox, equal day and night. We have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness all around the earth. As the earth moves around the sun, and here we are where in our summertime, and this is actually June the 21st, it's called the, uh, it's called the uh, summer solstice, and the earth is tilted at 23 and a half degrees towards the sun. So the northern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight. And this is why we have summer. Notice that the sun is out at the north pole. And that will last for several months. And at the south pole, it will be dark for several months. So they will have constant daylight and darkness where we will have a longer day. In fact, June the 21st is the longest day of the year. Let's move on around. We've talked about the equinox, but let's go over here to December 21st. This is the first day of winter for us. It's called the winter solstice. The sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23 and a half degrees south latitude. Whereas in the summer, it was over the Tropic of Cancer, which is 23 and a half degrees north latitude. But back to uh, the winter solstice over here. Now the sunlight is more directly over the southern hemisphere, and they are experiencing summertime. It's their first day of summer. But our sunlight is more at a, hitting the earth at a greater angle and bouncing off uh, more. And so we get more less, excuse me, we get less direct sunlight. And this is when we have our winter time. So summertime, the earth is tilted for the northern hemisphere, is tilted towards the sun. In the wintertime, the earth is tilted away from the sun. Uh, in the, if you were in the southern hemisphere, the, the seasons are just opposite of what they are in the northern hemisphere. Action. All right, so let's review uh, our lesson. 
First remember that day and night is caused when the earth is rotating on its axis, allowing the, the side of the earth that's facing the sun to have daylight and the side of the earth that is away from the sun to have darkness. Now, let's talk about the seasons. We're going to start here on about March the 21st. On March the 21st, the sun is directly above the equator. It's called a, the vernal equinox. And on the vernal equinox, we'll have equal day and night. Um, now we're going to move the earth around. We're going to, uh, the earth is going to go around the sun three months. And now, as you notice, with the tilt of the earth at 23 and a half degrees, the earth is tilted towards the sun. The sun is directly over the line of latitude 23.5. It's called the uh, Tropic of Cancer, and this is the first day of the first day of summer for us. It's going to be our longest day of the year, our shortest night of the year. We're going to continue around. We're going to go around three more months to September the twenty-first. On September the twenty-first, again, the sun is directly over the equator. This is another equinox. This is the autumnal equinox. In the autumnal equinox, we're again going to have equal day and night. Uh, from the, from the uh, summer solstice, which was the first day of summer, the days began to get, that was the longest day of the year, shortest night. The days began to get shorter. The nights began to get longer. But the days continued to be longer than the nights. Now... On this day, we have equal day and night. After this day, for another three months, the days will continue to get shorter. The nights will continue to be longer. But now, the nights will be longer than the days. Right, so we're going to move on around three more months. December the 31st. December the 31st. Um, excuse me, not December 31st, but December the 21st. Now the sun is directly over 23 and a half degrees south latitude. That is called the Tropic of Capricorn. On this day, it's our first day of winter. It's called the winter solstice. We have the shortest day of the year, the longest night of the year in the, southern, in the northern hemisphere. Notice in the southern hemisphere, now this is their first day of summer. And then we continue on around. We get back to March the 21st, again, the first day of spring or the, or the vernal equinox. And that's our lesson for today over, over uh, day and night and seasons.